Imitating Life, Video Art 2017-21, Omar Majid, 1984-2. More films about frustration and ego, part two in a series virtual mid-career retrospective. I've decided to do an online exhibition that may or may not really be an exhibition, but is in fact just a collection of work I've done over the past however many years really is an exercise for myself to reflect, but it may also incidentally be of interest or amusement to others. Um, I'm going to talk through a few videos I've done um, thematically and what I was intending with them, if anything. This one's called Calamity, bad yoke. Um, I'll roll it. So we see myself frying an egg. Dramatic slow motion. You can't make video art without breaking a few eggs. It's very tense. I'm going to be just talking over it all, you know. What's happened? The yoke split. This is like when a, a bomb goes off in a film and your tinnitus type thing in the stunned and stuff. It's a, making a big meal out of not much, you know. Next one. Everyone's a critic. I did the soundtrack for this as well. I'm trying to break this painting that I didn't like a great deal of an axe. Um, kind of it gets another bit of work out of something I've really just painted over. And it's just symbolic frustration of trying to make meaningful art in one's own lives as well as in the eyes of I'm sort of having quite a struggle to break this bit hard. It's a bit fun in a way, a lot of it, but I suppose I'm making points or sort of thinking things through. This one's called I Don't Need Anyone, and apologies should go to JJ72. Malik. Filmed by Johnny Burridge, it's a distinctive voice. Rolling. Type of swimmer than the mind of Is anything gonna happen? I don't know. an interest in making a public spectacle of myself as well as making light of when I was single how we all try and feel like we don't need people to get by but actually we're totally dependent on each other whether we like it or not it's another angle on the romantic theme with some recognisable tropes as I'm told Mark Horton said the very fact I wanted to show this put into question my mental health, which um, was certainly in question the whole time. That's 
some melody pop, by the way. Remember that? You might have guessed from the title, even if you can't recognise it, this is your ten by Serge Gainsbourg, featuring Jane Birkin. So I'm sort of wooing my own Jane Birkin, busy, who's older than me actually, slightly, um, with the melody pop or other futile instrument, um, but it seems to have worked. She's enjoying the melody pop to eat now. Um, this bit often makes people uncomfortable. She was quite sporting about it. Um, quite funny, I think. Just goes on a while, this. I mean, I enjoy it. I would. Here's a, another video called More Tea, collaboration with Shelley Slark. A um, friend videoed this for us, somewhat haphazardly, um, and I overdubbed the vocals. So we're having a tea party in a flood. Screaming represents the anguish of social anxiety when we try to contain ourselves and act civilised. Goes up not So that's that. This one I've retitled It's the Little Things in Life. It used to be called Satisfaction, which is probably equally good. Look at that, lovely. It's a short one. Tom Chow filmed and edited this for me. It's called You Artists Are So Sensitive. It's basically... Basically... What, why do we say that? It's featuring footage filmed in Queenswoods with the clarinet. Um, I'm in character as usual. <laughs> the swung version of Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground by the White Stripes. The lyric being, Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground, when I know that you're not around, and you'll know why you love it all if you're thinking of the Holy Ghost, something like that. I've garbled it, but like, it's got a personal kind of connotation that couldn't possibly communicate, and in that sense it's a failure, but I think it's quite nice to have a video about that. I mean, I could tell you that when I was 18, I went on a sort of date. Was it a date or was it? I don't know, with someone I met across the bar when I was working in the Three Elms. And ended up crying in the cafe out of the futility of trying to actually reach across to another person and, and connect. I was so lost and alone in myself. And that song, a bit after it came out, but... Um, reminds me of, I guess, a desire to connect in the woods and the frustration and dismay of being so enabled to even say a sentence to another person, such as my anxiety and mood at the time. Just quite a nice piece in the weather. This one's called Raging Mall. You may recognise the music again, music often features. Um, it's of course an homage to Raging Bull, the classic um, Robert De Niro boxing film. Molly here put on a stone for the role by eating pasta, as Robert De Niro did. It's sort of unremarkable, this use of slow motion again for that kind of pathos. It's obviously a humorous kind of pathos because really it's just a dog covering and telly at this point. Uh, 
uh, since seeing Andy Warhol's videos as a child in galleries I was taken to, it was lucky and fortunate to be taken to so many galleries. I felt video art should have something of the mundane in it, a bit of drama here they're fighting, hence the idea of black and white and the music. I'm probably ruining these by talking over them, I don't know, maybe you run a switch as well after the plan. That's all. And doesn't music just change footage? It's sort of a comment on that in a way, and like that's perception, like the filters through which we see our own lives, our own selves, the people around us. Totally subjective. Did you know green tea should be boiled in 72 degrees? Not like Coffee for a drink. I can copy choosing the gallery wall effect in PowerPoint when I made this. It's a fantasy that this would be going in the gallery. But it's also poking fun at that fantasy and the vanity of it. Like, in a way, I don't care. Like, I'd probably do this anyway. Like, questionable. But if I was on a desert island, I'd be making art about the desert island, probably. I think I would. Because I'm not on a desert island. Good girl. Molly's a good girl. She does rag teddies right now. Breaking the fourth wall there. Because it break the fifth wall, wouldn't it? Very moving. We just skipped it. Oh, there we go. Mozart's rock band was. Look, this little snowman. One of the first cartoon symbols of impermanence we come across in the West. When Briggs inspired this big influence on me and busy. Maybe many of you were moved by the friendship between the young boy and the snowman. But grief is about grief. So it's kind of pathos here as well as pathos. We look the bending snowman is actually um, made out of plasticity. It's not really melting, it's just kind of collapsing into a pile. Aren't we all? We'll just sit with this for a bit, eh? Maybe it's too small on your screen, I don't know. A couple of people showed me they watched the last thing of the paintings on their TVs at home. I thought that was really cool. You can do that thing wirelessly or something. I don't know how it works. It's a, a way, usually. Well, there's a way. There's a way. My dad always said. Well, there's no will, there's no way. Chickens in the background. Kind of 
spada. Ma tu gli si spada. I like making fun of serious things like that I suppose. This was from my parents' house where I'm now. It's like that in the world. So, there it is. Love. Never forgot to. videos to expediently cramming a bit of music over the footage and have the six up beautiful videos. Maybe the brain's got a pattern to know that and that's why maybe it's a secret stuff or how to leave you with any new stuff. It's sort of sometimes an exercise of not overthinking, even when you're making work about things you over before. Just kind of shooting the head I mean, again, I'm probably making too much of it. I hope it's the news that I'm telling you. Oh, oh, oh. He's passed. The next snowman. doing with my life eh? this one Skype Kurtz that I flicked to suddenly earlier and back um, features my friend Jason on a Skype call reading out the final bit from Heart of Darkness or specifically Apocalypse Now I've seen horrors horrors that you've seen but you have no right to call me a murderer. You have a right to kill me. You have a right to do that. You have no right to judge me. It's impossible for words to describe what's necessary to those who don't know what horror means. Horror. Horror has a face. And you must make a friend of horror. Horror and mortal terror are your friends. If they are not, then they are enemies to be feared. They are truly enemies. I remember when I was with Special Forces, it seems a thousand centuries ago, we went into a camp to inoculate the children. We left the camp after we had inoculated the children for polio, and this old man came running after us and he was crying. He couldn't sing. We went back there and they had come and hacked off every inoculated arm. They were in a pile, a pile of little arms. And I remember I... I, I cried, I wept like some grandmother, I wanted to turn my teeth out, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I want to remember it, I never want to forget it, I never want to forget, and then I realised, like I was shot, like I was shot with a diamond, a diamond bullet through my forehead, and I thought, my God, the genius of that, the genius, the will to do that, perfect, genuine, complete, crystalline, pure. And I realised they were stronger than we, because they could stand that these were not monsters, these were men, trained carders. These men who fought with their hearts, who had families, who had children, who were filled with love, well they had the strength, the strength to do that. If I had ten divisions of those men, our troubles here would be over very quickly. You have to have men who are moral, 
and at the same time who are able to utilise their pr primordial instincts to kill without fear and without passion, without judgment. Their judgment. Because it's judgment that defeats them. He was a bit unhappy with his performance. I just asked him off the cuff on a Skype call. We check in with each other about our mental health and stuff. And the light was just at that moment when I was talking to him, a slit down his face. And it reminded me of um, that final scene of Apocalypse Now where Marlon Brando has that bit of light down him in the darkness. And he gives this soliloquy and it was just fun in a way, but like the content's horrible, um, to recreate that scene with Kurtz as my friend, who's a kind guy and everything, but he could, in a way, do that role, or at least read the lines, you know. Um, but they said of Kurtz, his mind was clear, but his soul was mad, something along those lines. Um... I like the, I can't say his name, it's difficult, Thich Nan, the, the monk, you may know who I mean. Um, <clears throat> I've not heard the name said that much, just read him. And he, he had a poem that says, we're all potentially murderers and everything else, and, you know, we shouldn't see the shadow projected onto someone else and be like, they're bad, we're good rather look into our own darkness and sit with it and perhaps transform it. This is a sweet one for Counterbalance called Piano Improvisation as Payment for Haircut from Dad. And it is what it is.
This was a lockdown haircut. Remember them? Of course you do. That used to pay me 50p if I played um, Intercity Inter Stomp by Chris Norton, the jazz song from a collection that I had in a book. Um, or he liked Memory, the Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, it was a sort of little ritual we play for him, they give us 50p, so I thought I could pay for the haircut with the piano. Sort of barter system. But my skills are less practical than what you normally barter. Like, it's just needless to say, it's sort of silly to pay for services with art, or is it? And what's nice about this is obviously neither of us would expect a one payment from the other for a haircut or a piano piece. It's just sort of symbolic exchange. This one I've called rather unwieldily non-participation slash irritation, ongoing passive collaboration with D. Hurst, with Professor Tim Wilson. Hello. Um, 
I'm uh, Professor Tim Wilson, and uh, this is a message for Damien Hurst. Dear Damien Hurst, I'm Professor Tim Wilson, and I'm inviting you on behalf of Omar Majid.net to create an artwork called Non Participation Irritation. Uh, to make this artwork for Omar, all you have to do is ignore this message. Love and mischief. <laughs> Have fun. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, Damien Hurst is still collaborating on this as I sent him the message, and he's ignored it thus far. Let's hope he continues to do so. This one's called Dying of the Light. Quote from Beckett there. If you look closely, you can see the cigarette cherry, as it's called, in the profession, lighting up every now and again in the darkness. With um, this music in the background, you can hear Aphrodite's Child, I can't remember which tune, it's off 666, the concept album about the apocalypse. Basically just my friend Jamie Titterson filming me, sat both of us in the dark in the conservatory while I'm smoking. As I am now meta smoking, watching a video of me smoking in the dark. What on earth? It's a broken hall of mirrors, isn't it? But in relation to the Beckett quote, um, life is brief, but we've got time to struggle on the way down to oblivion or wherever. And the music was recorded ambiently, it was on in the room, it's just a straight up vi unedited video. The length of that cigarette and the length of the song. I hear my wheezing breaths in between. It's frustrating being a smoker because you know you should stop, but it's just the most difficult thing. And it makes you kind of philosophical, seemingly, about illness, physical illness. But actually, it'd be much better to be healthy. But the addiction takes over and you think, I'm enjoying this, or, you know, the kind of thing that Alan Carr wrote about, not the chatty man. sounds healthy doesn't it everyday occurrence so I suppose here I'm confronting in a sense my own mortality 
and trying to scare myself into prolonging the inevitable. It's difficult when sometimes it seems the inevitable would actually be welcome as a expected end to the suffering inherent and varying the present in life. That's a pretty bleak place to be in a way. I think it might be more common than people admit. Demis Roussos sang on this record. He's not singing on this track, I don't think. He's had a deja vu. I think they use the Diablo and Music House here, which is the devil's music. It's a scale. Pentatonic or something. So the Simpsons uses it in the theme tune, incidentally. Fade to black that was already there anyway. <laughs> 